kids. I'm Teacher Mickey here, and we have Jude. <laughs> Hi, Jude. So I invited Jude today because we have something to show you, and it's called strings of seed. Now over here, I have a yarn, a short yarn, and I'm going to tie it around Jude's hand. So here now, Jude is going to try and break that yarn away from his hand. Can you do it, Jude? Hello. Now children, our seams are very much like this string over here. And instead of tying it to our wrist, our seams tie around our hearts. Because of that, we cannot really love and come to God because we are trapped by it. Like wanting things our way, wanting to buy more things for ourselves, and wanting to fight with someone when we are angry or snatching things. Now, when it is one or two small seams, it might be easy to break free on our own. But all of us, we have more than one seam. Like, seams of being selfish, seams of being greedy, seams of lying, seams of being mean with our words, or even seams of being rude and many, many more. So when we have so many seams like that tying around our hearts, is it easy to break free from it? It's going to be very hard to break free from it. So children, in life, our sins will continue to grow and grow and grow and grow in our hearts if we do not come to God because we cannot fight Satan alone on our own. Just like this string binding Yara's hand, we cannot break free. However, our faith in God is like a pair of scissors where we believe in God and we start to come to Him, praying for Him to help us fight our sins, ask for forgiveness for what we have done wrong and want to grow more in love, God will help us to break free from our sins. So we can only be free in our spirits when we come to God and God alone. God can so easily give us peace and joy and hope when we rely on Him. So continuing with our Unlikely Heroes series, today the character that we're going to talk about is also blinded by his own sins. But later, he showed us how he relied on God to be set free. So, here I have my Unlikely Heroes card. And last week, we talked about Rahab. So, now we're left with three characters. What I'm going to do is to let you guess our Unlikely Hero character for today. Now, today's hero is a pretty young man. And he is also a king. Who is he? Yes! Today's unlikely hero is none other than King David. Now, do you remember the story of the little boy who used a stone to kill the big giant Goliath? Well, that little boy was David and the same King David we're talking about today. Now, David was greatly loved and blessed by God because of his faith in him. So later on, he grew up to be the king of Israel. But something happened later on, and we are going to find out. To tell this story, I have invited Prophet Nathan from the Bible. So let's listen to him. Hello children, my name is Nathan, and I am the prophet of Israel. Prophets are messengers of God to tell people different things. Here today, I'm going to share with you a story from my time, a long, long time ago. Back in my time, David was the king of Israel, and he is a great king. But David was also a human being, and he made mistakes too. We all sinned, and so did David. One day, David was on his roof. He couldn't sleep, so he paced back and forth. And back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. Forth and okay, that's enough. But then, looking into his neighbor's garden, he saw a beautiful woman taking a bath. David decided that he was in love with her. Now you must remember this. David already has many, many wives. Children, do you know what a wife means? It is when a man and a woman are married to each other and the man will be called the woman's husband and the woman will be called the man's wife. So, David is married to many, many women, many, many wives. Do you think David really needed another wife? Ah, but here's the catch. David didn't care. He asked the servants to go and find out about this beautiful woman that he saw. 
Now the servants came back to David and told him that this woman is called Bathsheba, and she was the wife of one of David's most faithful soldiers, Uriah. This means that Bathsheba is already married to Uriah. Now Uriah loved God, and he was a good man and a good soldier. But even though David knows that Uriah is his faithful soldier, he still went to be with Bathsheba. Now, is that the right thing to do, my children? Well, this went on, and David wanted Bathsheba to be his wife. So, David thought of a plan, an evil plan. To kill Uriah so that he can have Bathsheba to himself. Now there was a war happening that time between Israel and the kingdom of Ammon. The soldiers of David are prepared to fight. So David did something very wrong. He told one of his men to put Uriah right at the front of the fight where there is the strongest battle, so that Uriah will easily be killed by the enemies. He really wanted Uriah to die, and so the war happened, and Uriah died, fighting at the front line, just as David hoped he would. Later on, Bathsheba and David got together. She became one of his wives, and they had a baby. But God was not happy with David at all for all the wrong things he has done to steal his soldier's wife and kill him. God was displeased, so God sent me Nathan the prophet. Now I was upset with King David as well, so God sent me to tell King David a story, and this is the story I told King David. There were once two men. One was poor, and one was rich. The rich man had many, many sheep and lambs. And all kinds of stuff, but the poor man, he only owned one little lamb whom he loved very much. One day, a traveler came to visit the rich man, and the rich man needed to feed his guest a special meal. But instead of taking one of his own many lambs to feed his guest, the rich man stole the poor man's one and only little lamb and cooked it for his meal. Now, after hearing me tell this story to him, King David was very angry because last time he was a shepherd as well, and he understood the sadness of the poor man who lost his only little lamb. So he asked me, "Who is this terrible, selfish, and rich man who stole the poor man's lamb? Tell me who he is, and I will punish him." Then I told King David, "David, you are that man." God has blessed you in so many ways. He even gave you so many wives. But you took Uriah's one and only lamb, his wife Bathsheba, and you even killed him to get her. Then David said, "Oh Nathan, I have sinned against God." And David was filled with so much sadness after realizing what he has done. He fell on his face before God and he asked for the Lord's forgiveness. And you know what? God forgave him. After that, David tried even harder to be a good and godly king. Although he is forgiven, David had to have some consequences for the bad thing he has done. So God took away the first child that he and Bathsheba had. Also, David's many children would always fight. But one of David's strengths was knowing how to be sorry when he do something wrong, instead of trying to hide his sin away from God. And because of that, God continues to bless David. Later on, he had a second child with Bathsheba, and this baby is called Solomon, whom God loved a lot. He also went on to win many wars and became a great king of the people of Israel as well. All while remaining close to God, and that, children, is the story of our unlikely hero today, King David. Thank you, Prophet Nathan, for that wonderful story. Now, children, it is definitely wrong to steal and kill someone. 
and later on, David faced the punishments of the mistakes he has made. But what made David a hero is his courage to admit that he is wrong and his humble heart to face God and ask for God's help to forgive him and he become even more reliant and dependent on God. Now, we too may have made mistakes in our life, but the first thing we do should not be to hide away from God. We should come right up to the Lord in prayers and face Him just like King David did. God blesses those who leans close to Him and needs Him to clean us from the sins in our hearts, in our words, and in our actions. So, right now, let us think about the mistakes or the sins that we may have done in our own lives, like lying, being mean to another person, shouting at our siblings, or being rude to our parents, and many, many other things. Now, whatever it is, let us have the heart of King David to know where we are wrong and ask God to forgive us and guide us on what to do next. Is it maybe to show more love? Is it to say sorry, to be careful about what we say or other things? God will surely help us just like he helped King David. Now, let us go to God's word, shall we? Today's Bible verse comes from 1 John 1 verse 9. I will read it in small parts and you will repeat after me. Let's read. But if we confess our sins, he will forgive our sins. We can trust God. He does what is right. He will make us clean from all the wrongs we have done. Alright kids, welcome to the Busy Hands Corner. And to end off today's lesson about our unlikely hero, King David, we are going to do a little magic trick. This magic trick is called God makes us clean. So, let's talk about the things that you need. Firstly, I would like you to get two pieces of paper towels like that. Next, you need to get a permanent black marker and some washable markers. Then finally, a tray of water. With that, let's prepare our magic trick. Now, the first thing you will need is your paper towel. And we are going to have two sides, right? One is the bottom part and the other one is the top part. So what you are going to do is to take your permanent black marker and we're going to draw on a big heart shape on the bottom of the part over here. Okay, so my heart shape looks like this. And now you are going to fold it and draw the same heart shape on the top part of your paper towel. Here you go. Like this on the front and like that on the bottom. Now, you're going to take out your washable markers. So, what you're going to do with this washable markers is you're going to open up to the bottom part of the paper towel with a heart shape and you're going to use your washable markers and you're going to write the word SIN and you're just going to colour all around with squiggly lines and zigzag lines on all the kinds of scenes that could be in our hearts, okay? So draw it in the heart shape. Do not draw it on the front part, okay? Draw it on the bottom heart shape. So let's get drawing. Okay, once you've drawn that, you're going to fold it back like this again. Now, put your markers all aside and bring in your tray of water. Now, let's look at our paper towel over here. You see this first front part of the paper towel where it's not being drawn. It's like how we can't really see the scenes of our heart. And we like to pretend that our heart is nice and clean and no one can see some of the mistakes or bad things that we have inside our hearts. Now, I want you to put this folded paper towel into your tray of water and see what happens. Now you see, the truth is our hearts are really all messy with scenes like that. Can you see the scenes appearing on the white heart? Well, that's how our hearts are really like. However, when we let Jesus come into our hearts, 
to confess and tell him what we have done wrong and ask him to teach us in doing what is right, he forgives us and he washes the messiness of our sins away, leaving us with a clean heart as a child of God. So let us not be afraid or run away from God. We can tell him anything and he has the power to help us with our sins. So remember, be like King David. Whatever things that we have done wrong or any sins that we are still hiding in our hearts, we can always come to God and ask Him for help to forgive and to guide us. Now you can go ahead and try this magic trick at home. With that, we have come to the end of our lesson today on the unlikely hero King David. Join us next week as we talk about our seventh unlikely hero. Till then, take care and I'll see you kids. Bye!